So this is my uh, current bike, the Yamaha XSR 125, which is also my first bike. I uh, bought it back in December 22, October 22, and uh, it's only got like 5,200 kilometers, like, like you know, 3,500 miles plus. So not a lot, because it's it's a very short ride to work and uh, it's all work and no play for me so yesterday I did uh, like a two and a half hour ride Saturday evening on this came back home I thought I'd been knackered but I didn't feel I was ready to go again so to speak woke up this morning still feeling really fresh it was a beautiful ride um, this bike is absolutely beautiful and uh, one reason I wanted to go to the Athens Expo and look at the bikes up close is uh, I chose this one you know reading on the internet and uh, I went to the the dealer that had a black one to buy one and I saw it up close and it was a lot more impressive uh, like photos didn't do it justice so I want to go and uh, see have a look at the motorcycles up close and also I want to buy a sport bike next and I want to sit on the Yamaha R7 and the Honda CBR500R and see what the riding position is like, especially the Yamaha that everyone says is uh, so aggressive. So this motorcycle, I'd be sad to see it go to be honest. There's not a person in this world that isn't impressed by its looks and compliments it. And I'll, uh, spoiler alert, not a single motorcycle on uh, on the uh, Moto Expo is as good looking as this one. I saw them all. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, really. And uh, now, the monstrosity of modern motorcycles, the, um, the exhaust. Here's the thing, so everyone will tell you that because of modern laws and uh, having to be quiet and all that, they have to have something like this. So I was born in the 70s, 74, and uh, back in the day it was extremely common that, you know, girls got up on a, got on a bike, um, on the back seat of the bike, and they would come off the bike with some... Uh, uh, really bad burns on their caps from the exhaust. It was super common back then. And some of these burns were really, really nasty. And I've never seen anyone mention that, but I remember when I bought the bike and I came off after riding and I put my hand on the exhaust and it was cool to the touch, you know. So that's a big big extra big plus of these modern exhausts that they are safe for your uh, passenger they will not burn their uh, leg so the younger ones may not know that this was a thing but it used to happen all the time you know if you look at the old photos with all the steel exhausts they were super super hot and once you touch your foot or touch them with your foot the moment you feel the burn is already too late and uh, yeah, all right. Now the first uh, blooper of the day is uh, we went there. I had my wife photographing me on the bikes, and then we went out for dinner. And I had a look on them on the on my phone, which of course has a small screen. And I look at the first picture. I'm like, why did I take a picture of some random guy on a bike? And I go to the next picture and I'm like, what? <laughs> Same thing again. And uh, then I realized that the, the random guy was me. So excuse me while I go kill my dog. I'll be right back. So yes, I did not recognize myself. And that's because after riding your bike for a few hours and then uh, washing your hair, your hair becomes twice the size, but that's no excuse. 
after two or three months without shaving, I took a shave this morning. And yeah, I did not recognize myself. So I got on the Yamaha R7. There's something about this bike that really I gravitate towards it. My impressions. I was surprised that, that it looked it did not have a lot of presence. It looked rather small. You could see it's a rather smaller bike. Uh, the sitting position, yes, was the most aggressive of all the bikes I uh, got on during uh, my time there. <laughs> I did not actually feel I could feel the weight on my wrists. But it was my back that I could feel some strain because of all the work that I've been, you know, that you do throughout the week. At my age, your back starts to hurt. When you get old, your back will hurt. Uh, it will be stiff and, you know. Uh, overall, I don't think I would have a problem with the R7's riding position because, um... Like I said, I don't do a lot of miles. It's the occasional um, uh, long ride, like two or three times a month. Well, that's it. I only get like three days off every month from work. It's usually four Sundays minus one Sunday that I get a shift. So that's it for me. So why would I worry about the riding position of the Yamaha? The fact that it's a small bike and uh, it's quite light is a plus. In, uh, during city riding as well. Uh, the engine we know is a gem. So it remains uh, a candidate. Uh, then, yeah, 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 I do notice the pretty girl there. Um, the XSR 700 I want to try wasn't there, I didn't see it, so I hopped on the XSR 900. I should like this. The looks of the bike, I'm not a fan, you know. It's a bit of a mess. It's like things put together because they went to the, um, uh, you know, they, 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 they got whatever they had on the shelf and put it together and they came up with this. Not a fan. I, the 900 in particular has this sensational triple cylinder engine. It sounds so good that will make you forget the inline force. If you put an aftermarket exhaust on this thing, it's like out of the world sound. You don't need a fourth cylinder, so to speak. The riding position is like, you know, pretty good, no problems, but I, I'm not a fan of the looks, to be honest. It was never my intention to try the Eliminator, but when I got to the Kawasaki stand, and I saw it, I'm like, whoa. That was the surprise uh, for me, the, the bike that looked really, really cool. And I wanted to try it. Um, and yes, it's very approachable. Everyone can flat foot this bike pretty much. And it looks beautiful, I have to say. Um, looks like a chopper, but... <laughs> Your feet are, uh, but it is uh, an actual naked bike, and that's it. I don't think I'm going to be considering this as a choice. Mainly because I want to go for a sport bike next. And if I were to buy another naked, I wouldn't go for this. I would go for the 650 RS. But beautiful. Uh, also, I didn't, uh, I wasn't looking at... Uh, I wasn't interested in the Vulcan, but I've never been on one of these before. And uh, I was looking for the footbooks, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, there they are. Can't quite understand why they do this. I don't see the reason, like, they're perfectly fine back here. I guess over super long rides, this somehow is good for your legs or something. You can rest them on on the pegs in that position. Anyway, it felt nice. It looked and felt heavy. Uh, you wouldn't want to be going around city traffic with it. But on open roads and on uh, you know, empty roads, I should say, uh, it should be a pretty fun bike. Again, I could see myself having a lot of fun riding this bike, but it's not my first um, 
would not be my first choice. Uh, a great bike nonetheless, pretty good looking as well. The um, the classic, uh, the 800, W800, I think it's called. That's the second blooper of the day. I did not notice the center stand here, so I got on the bike and then I tried to flat foot it. I'm like, no, I cannot completely flat foot this bike. And it's only when I was looking at the pictures that I noticed this center stand. Anyway, yeah, what can you say about the looks of this one? I, I'm a fan of retro, I'm not completely a fan of classic. Okay, so this uh, classic, retro and neo retro, and I'm all about retro, and uh, yeah, I could do with neo retro. The classic style, not really my thing, but the bike is beautiful, and I've heard it, and it sounds fantastic as well. So you can't go wrong with this one if it fits your style and your etiquette. Right in position, you know, fine, okay. Lip on the 650RS. I'm not a fan of the um, candy red color, and uh, unfortunately, this year we're getting this one, not the green one. Um, it was my first choice, and the natural progression from my XSR 125 for me until. Uh, I just couldn't get over, over the uh, idea of a sport bike. So it's a great bike, but it's probably not gonna be my first choice for my next bike. The new Kawasaki Ninja 500, so the 400 just got better. Uh, the Americans were um, complaining about it not getting any more power and saying things like it was because of emissions, so they make it made it bigger to preserve performance but that was pretty silly to say the least because there are no, no new emissions regulations out there it just got more torque out of it that's it and uh, it's only in the end now we found out that it's only the European A2 versions that are not getting any extra power just the extra torque the American version gets the extra power because no matter what you do I mean yes it's not gonna rev as high as the 400 but it's still going to get more power, you know, it's a bigger engine. And so it gets more power, the US version does get more power. The European one cannot get more power, but it gets the extra torque at least. Um, the Ninja is a light and smaller bike, but it didn't, feel, it didn't look and feel small to me. I didn't feel cramped or anything like that, so it would be a very, very decent choice. It is a bit of a stepping stone for those that are interested in going to faster uh, bikes and ending up with a super sport and eventually even a leader bike. Um, of course it can be your do-it-all and forever bike as well. But I'm um, not really a fan of the look of the Kawasaki Ninja. I don't like the front look and that's why I'm also not considering the 650 but the 400 was a great bike and this one is just even better you know even better and actually if I got it I'll get it in black yeah it looks good in black and I probably wouldn't regret it either the Honda Dax well this is unfortunately expensive but an absolutely fantastic bike Because back in the uh, was it mm, early 90s when I finished school and I went into university and I started making you know going on vacation on Greek islands and stuff, there's no better thing you want to be riding than this. You can have two people uh, sitting on this one and it will take you anywhere. No fuss, no gear change. Uh, worrying about gear changes. doesn't have a clutch. Yes, you do have gear changes, but buttons for them. It's perfect. It's perfect. I mean, you want to take this to a Greek island and just go around all day on this. Two people. It's absolutely beautiful. And it would be perfect for me. That's, like I said, my work is 500 meters from home. It would be perfect for me. 
but it's a little bit expensive for what it is still love it though and maybe maybe I'll just get one so the uh, I got on the 650R this is the 500R I got on the 650R it has a very nice and relaxed riding position so the 650R was you know Honda were f I think sort of first to try and bridge the gap between hyper sports and sports bikes uh, super sports I'm sorry because super sports are not really sports bikes they are um, race bikes all right with license plates on them and so they got a uh, the inline four they retained the inline four and just made it a lot more civilized less power more torque the problem with the CBR is that the parallel twins exist and the parallel twins are faster okay they're not faster down the straight they're faster like 99% of the time when you're not thrashing it that's not to say that the bike lacks torque or anything like that it's, it's got torque in abundance for everyday riding it's just that if you have a parallel twin like the R7 or the MT07 or something like that you are having your fun right there every second no matter the RPM you twist the throttle and you're having you're getting what the bike has to offer uh, in the case of the CBR you have to redline it to get what it has to offer and so if that's your thing uh, with an aftermarket exhaust this thing is like hellish right it's fantastic it's great but it's only those moments that where the bike I think will feel special and of course always going to urge you to take it to the red line so the the 500 yep it was what I expected to be the riding position is pretty relaxed and while not the exciting you know choice it remains the most reasonable choice the, the, the most sensible choice for me this engine, what well, I have done with its efficiency is like incredible. It's uh, four seventy one cc's. It burns less fuel than much smaller engines. Like the the R three burns a lot more fuel than this, and this one's hella heavy as well. So if you factor in the the weight of the bike and the capacity of the engine, it's incredible how efficient they've made it. And there's the thing that uh, sometime in the near future, the um, there's going to be a rush to you know save the planet, you know the environment that we've reached the point of no return etc etc and it's gonna get ugly real fast and uh, the bike world is not as uh, is as big as the car world alright it's gonna get models gonna hit motorcycles and the IC engine pretty hard and pretty fast and they're gonna um, you're gonna lose your IC engine but you're also gonna have to give up your existing IC engine because the a fuel um, cost is gonna skyrocket so the efficiency of this engine is gonna matter then a lot so with the eye in the future on the future um, this makes a lot of sense as well uh, it's a very strong candidate for my next bike uh, so I got a m few more shots I don't like these colors. I don't like the 24 colors. I prefer the 23 colors. But what can you do? Of course, I can buy the 23 one. It's 700 euros cheaper as well. But you you lose that in resale value anyway, and don't get the TFT dust and stuff. And um, the black one also. My wife prefers the black one over the other one, but last year's black also had those red stripes and looked really really cool uh, yeah and there are no red stripes here it's just the lighting 
um, the Honda and X750 I was supposed to look for the 500 and I got on the 750 by mistake and I noticed that there was no clutch lever, lever. so this is the DCT version I think pretty cool bike not my cup of tea these two rivers and I don't like adventure bikes at all but I thought I'd uh, you know I have a look um, I'm sure it's a great bike to live with both this and the 500 well while not exactly the start of the show for me this is the most sensational entry in the bike world in 2024 like I said Honda tried to bridge the gap with their uh, um, 650R and then Suzuki came and Suzuki be like fuck your super sports I don't care about the super sports I'm not worrying about bridging any gap this is the new sport and uh, no matter how much hate is getting on the internet from the you know the R6 and the Super Sport fanboys, the thing is, uh, I think this thing's gonna sell like crazy, like absolutely crazy. And it was exactly what the bike world and the market needed. So everyone's uh, been talking about the uh, comfort of this uh, motorcycle. So I got on it and. It looked to me a little big and weighty. I didn't check the weight. I mean, just the the feeling I got from it. But the freaking riding position was more perfect than perfect. No other bike I tried fit me as well as this one. You know, I sat on it and it was like, yeah, this is what I want to be. It was. It almost felt more comfortable than my XSR125 where you're sitting on a chair pretty much, okay. I don't know how they did it, that's how it felt. But you know, Christos, it's a sport bike and oh, you're sitting like upright on a sport bike. Next thing you do is you push your butt back and suddenly you find yourself in the perfect position for tucking. You can tuck perfectly, you just slide your ass back and you are in a perfect position to, you know, hug the... Uh, the tank and hide behind the um, the windscreen and uh, I was so pleasantly surprised by the riding position of course I'm 5'11 uh, and proportions do matter here you know uh, back in my university days a couple of friends of mine I remember they were like one or two centimeters taller at the shoulder and I was one or two centimeters taller than them overall because I had a longer neck, you know. So I guess I don't have particularly long legs or uh, certainly not particularly long arms. Proportions do matter. This one fit me like a glove. And I lost my slip when this bike came out, when I saw all the torque it had and all that stuff. But. I realize that the engine is too big for me. This is not an efficient way for me to go riding. I, I don't. <laughs> Some say, you know, only 80, 82 horsepower, whatever. Suzuki doesn't quote any figures. <coughs> but I don't care about the horsepower. The torque is amazing, it's uh, crazy. But I don't need all that torque. I don't need it. I don't need such a big engine. I don't need burning so much fuel. I don't need all that performance myself. That's why I would rather go with the R7 and eventually maybe preferably with the CBR500R. Otherwise I can see why this bike is so highly regarded. And um, who knows, maybe I'll just get one myself it doesn't matter <laughs> how much torque and power I want I, I wouldn't mind it being there I'm not for sure and uh, the star of the show for me 
This is the bike that's been giving me sleepless nights. The new Yamaha XSR 900 GP. I don't know why they did that to me, because, you know, I'm a retro bike guy, and uh, th when I started getting this um, you know, desire for sport bikes, I said, okay, I'm going to go get a sport bike, and I'm going to be really, really sad about mm, giving up my um, my naked retro bike. And then, you know, you can't have everything in life, etc., etc. And then Yamaha go and release a retro sport bike. And I grew up in the era of Alan, uh, Alan Prost versus Ayrton Senna. I watched every race. I watched every race between Kevin Schwantz and uh, Wayne Rainey. I will not forget all these experiences. Those were the days. And they go and release this thing and I... It's, it's perfect. It is perfect, look at it. Look at how long it is, look at the, look at the design here. Look at the cockpit, it's like a formula, like it has a cockpit and the... Uh, it is a TFT dash, okay, but it's like deep, deep buried into the cockpit. Oh, Jesus. I have no words. Just freaking look at it. It's perfect. The starting price is 13,900 euros and um, funnily enough they have a, a cover that makes it look even more than the uh, GP500 bikes of the era and they sell it separately. Why the fuck did you just not put it on and include in the price? I don't get it, mate. Are you gonna be selling us this bike as it's meant to be like piece by piece? Or oh, what the fuck? Seriously. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's a piece missing here and you have to buy it separately, all right? They also have a full Akrabovic exhaust that looks absolutely fantastic, but I'm sure it, it, it will cost like two grand to put on. And suddenly you're looking at 16 grand plus the cover and plus the uh, you know tank pads and tank grips and all that. I would say I don't care about fender delete and all that. Nothing like that. Looking at almost 17 grand out the door. Though most likely I would say 15. I would not really buy the Akrapovic to begin with. I would just you know ride the bike without it. This is the Yamaha's triple seven. What an engine, man! What an engine, man! And I would enjoy the bike as is. Oh well, okay, yeah. So I went there to check the R7 CBR 500R and all the other options, and I ended up getting sleepless nights over the XSR 900 GP. So. Thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next one.